230 million years ago, in what would become southwestern China, a large aquatic reptile waits at the bottom of its habitat for the right time to strike at a fish. It was called Eorhynchocelis. Eorhynchocelis looked a lot like a large lizard, but it had a wide round shaped body that was supported by wide flat ribs that look like those found on turtle skeletons. This is because the flat ribs were the precursor to a shell, and Eorhynchocelis was a member of the group of animals that would eventually go on to become turtles. But there were problems. The tip of Eorhynchocelis' mouth pointed into a beak with teeth at the back of its mouth. However, later more shell turtles didn't have beaks. Eorhynchocelis' fossils have been found in an aquatic ecosystem, but there were older and later primitive turtles discovered living on land and this discovery was just one of many roadblocks that have been in the way of finding out how turtles evolved. Eorhynchocella shows how confusing turtle evolution is, but it goes further than this, as to this day the question of where turtles come from is inconclusive. The earliest turtle that was recognisable as a turtle was called Proganochelis, that lived over 200 million years ago in the Triassic period. Proganochelis was discovered in the 1800s, and for a while this was the oldest turtle ancestor known to have existed. It showed that turtles were ancient, being around as old as dinosaurs, but it just looked like a turtle and didn't offer any clues of how their shell or other prominent turtle features evolved. Luckily, since the discovery of Proganochelis, many other turtle ancestors have been discovered that have transitionary features of both turtles and the reptiles they evolved from. However, although this has cleared up some unknowns, the question of where turtles came from and which animals they are most closely related to is still uncertain. At first, it was thought that turtles weren't closely related to any other living reptile groups, and may have been the last survivors of an ancient lineage of reptiles. All reptiles alive today, like crocodiles, lizards and snakes, are known as diapsids, which all descended from a common ancestor over 300 million years ago. However, around this time, there was another, now extinct group of reptiles called the anapsids. The anapsids were very dominant during the Permian, but they went extinct around 200 million years ago in the late Triassic. Due to similarities in their skull structure, it was thought that turtles may actually belong to an ancient lineage of anapsids that survived into the present day. However, modern DNA studies have shown that it is very unlikely that turtles are anapsids, but which group of diapsids they belong to is not known yet. One study has shown that they are most closely related to crocodiles and birds. However, the most popular theory concerning the origins of the turtles places them closest to lizards and tuataras, specifically that they belong to a group of animals known as the Sauropterogeans that actually contains plesiosaurs. But why and how did turtles develop their shells? The oldest animal thought to be a turtle ancestor was called Eunotosaurus, that lived in what is southern Africa today, about 260 million years ago in the late Permian period. Like Eorhynchocelis, Eunotosaurus had no shell, but had a wide round torso with flattened ribs that are seen in modern turtles, hidden under their shell, and there were several other creatures from around this time that show the same adaptations. So although some scientists disagree that Eunotosaurus was closely related to turtles, it is agreed that turtles developed a wider body as a precursor to their shell, and this causes a problem because it is easy to see the advantage of having a protective shield and so why turtles would have evolved them, but it is difficult to see why their ancestors would have needed wide flat ribs. For a four-legged creature, the widening of the ribs has a very serious effect on the animal's mobility. To see this, look no further than turtles. Breathing is restricted, and movement becomes more difficult as ribs are primarily used to support the torso during movement, and they play an important role in lung function. Broader ribs mean a stiffer body, which will lead to a shortening of stride length and less efficient breathing. Rib bones in vertebrates don't vary very much, and the ribs of an elephant are actually very similar to the ribs of a stegosaurus, despite these animals being very distantly related. It seems that when it comes to torso and rib shape, there are very few shapes that do the job well, and so most animals are similar in this respect. However, turtles and their ancestors are the exception, and their ribs are highly modified. There is evidence among these turtle ancestors that their chest started to expand to help them dig, and that the early shellless turtle were in fact burrowing animals. Eunotosaurus's front claws were much larger than its hind feet, 
and fossils showed that its forelimbs had large anchor points for big muscles, meaning their front limbs would have been very muscular as well. All of these being common features seen among many burrowing animals. If you know Tosaurus was a burrowing animal, its broad ribs would make sense, because they would support and stabilise a powerful digging action. So it is thought that before turtles became walking fortresses, they were wide-bodied professional burrowers, but then later down the line used this platform to develop a shell. And this would mean that the evolution of the turtle shell would be an example of exaptation, which is when a trait evolves for a certain function, but then the same trait is later co-opted and developed on to serve a different function. For instance, feathers initially evolved for heat regulation, but now birds use them for all sorts of things, like flying and mating displays. And it turns out that the evolution of the turtle shell is the same. Unotosaurus was at least mostly a land-dwelling animal, but the later species of turtle ancestors discovered living after Unotosaurus seem to have moved into the water, with plenty of evidence of a semi-aquatic lifestyle. One of these was called Odontic Helis, that was found in China and would have lived around 220 million years ago in the mid-Triassic period. Like Unotosaurus, it had a round and wide body, but also had the beginnings of a shell on its underside, known as the plastron, but no evidence of a shell on its top side. This offers good evidence that turtles started to develop their shell from the bottom up, but also that turtles evolved their shell in an aquatic setting because the earliest turtle with at least a bit of a shell was discovered in the water, but also because if the shell was for protection, it would make sense that they would evolve chest first while in the water, because this part of the body is more exposed while swimming than it would be if they were on land. The stem turtles that have been discovered after Unotosaurus being at least partly aquatic actually makes a lot of sense, because the adaptations required for being good at digging are similar to those that make animals good swimmers. For instance, although it may not look like it, burrowing animals like moles and armadillos are also excellent swimmers. The broad ribbed adaptations that made the turtle ancestors better at digging would have presented the turtles with a lot of problems in other areas, like being one of the reasons that turtles are very slow. Reptiles walk in a sprawling posture, with their limbs coming out from the side of their body, and so in order to move quickly, they have to flex their entire torso. The widening of the torso would have made this flexing motion almost impossible. However, living in the water would have drastically reduced this issue. So once turtles had developed their extreme modifications to their torso, they were funneled into certain lifestyles, with one of them being becoming an aquatic creature. Another defining feature of modern turtles is their beak, that they use for slicing through leaves or to hammer down on prey, and Odontochelus didn't have one. Odontochelus literally translating into toothed turtle with a half shell. However, Eorhynchochelus did. The problem is that Eorhynchochelus was about 10 million years older than Odontochelus, and although had wide flat ribs, did not have a shell, or even half of one. So the more advanced and younger turtle had no beak, and the older turtle did. It seems that beaks may have evolved at least twice among turtles, and their evolution was just very complicated. Evolution is not a linear process, and sometimes closely related animals will branch off and do their own thing, but also, sometimes closely related animals will branch off and still end up doing the same thing. For instance, there is a family of birds called the Confuciornithids, coincidentally from China as well, that are notable for being some of the first birds to lose their teeth and develop a beak. However, the twist is that this bird beak was most likely not the same beak we see on modern birds today, and evolved separately and these animals are another example of a beak evolving on multiple occasions across the same animal group. It is basically convergent evolution, but on a closely related species, and if different animals can evolve the same feature, it actually makes a lot of sense that a similar animal would as well. So Eorhynchochelus was just a sign of things to come, rather than being the ancestor of the beaked turtles. So the evolution of turtles presented many difficulties for scientists to figure out and it turns out that this was because it was a complicated mosaic of turtle-like reptile offshoots, each with different turtle features. And although a vague story of how they evolved may finally be emerging, there are still many mysteries waiting to be uncovered, with the new discoveries that are bound to happen. Thank you for watching. A big shout out goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the large contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.